Hello, everybody. Welcome uh, to our show. Thank you for listening to the Startup Secret for Entrepreneur. I am your host, Shelby Olishlager. Our mission here is to help entrepreneurs make a difference and navigate the messy world of startup or relaunch. Join me today where we dig deep with our guests to give you the best concepts and strategies to fast track your business. Today, our special guest is Brittany Greg Yu. You're going to have to correct me on that. (laughs) Joining us today to uh, talk all about our business and her coaching. So to get started first, thank you so much for joining us. And just to get going, can you give us a bit of an introduction to what you do? Sure. Hi, Shelby. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for having me on the show today. My name is Brittany Gregorio. I know it's a little bit of a tongue twister. (laughs) I am a content marketing strategist and the CEO of Gregorio Marketing. Wow. So tell us a little bit about that. How did this get started for you? Yeah, sure thing. So um, I'm actually born and raised from New York. Just a little more of a background about me. I have three kids, two cats. Um, I'm located in the beautiful Hudson Valley of New York. So it's really quite lovely here. And we're next to some phenomenal wineries. Um, Mm -hmm. So that's always a plus. So I got started in this industry. Um, My background, I have a lot of managerial style background and, you know, have done a lot of office work. And I was uh, the manager for two huge departments for a multi-million dollar startup company in California. And I developed a lot of specialized, unique skills while working for them. So I decided to take those special, unique skills and develop a company. Uh, My business first started out uh, as a virtual assistant business, and I was the VA for many entrepreneurs all around the world, Um, but I was really quite specialized in the marketing, content marketing aspect of it. So I decided to really dig deep into that and form Gregorio Marketing to further be able to help the entrepreneurs that really need the the assistance out there because it's there's a lot going on in the market today. It's extremely crowded and and entrepreneurs really do need the help because a lot of them are very confused out there right now. So that's how I started. Nice. Nice. So you mentioned these unique skills. Can you talk a little bit about them and how they have helped you with this? Absolutely. So a lot of problem solving skills, that's a really big component when it comes to marketing, branding, content, um, strategizing, problem solving, I have a deep love for connecting with other humans, um, a passion, if you will. So I am really great with other people, um, that customer attention, that client attention, uh, holding hands, so to speak, guiding them, a very one-on-one personalized experience. Um, And that is something that's very near and dear to my heart. So you know, taking all of those skills, rolling it into one um, really helps me as an entrepreneur because problem solving is just a part of being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You need to be on your toes always and you need to be a pretty decent problem solver. So um, that helps me within my own company. It helps me with my team and it really helps me to leverage that with my current clientele, which has been phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. And I find having that approach, just the authentic realness of a human to human is what we all kind of want. And if you're able to, you know, take that seriously, I think that's really beneficial. So with your clients, how would you describe your ideal clients and how do you try to tell them how important this is to get them from where they are to where you want them to be? Right. So I work with a very wide range of entrepreneurs. I really love to work with the entrepreneur that has their messaging, that has their branding. You know, they they know what they're doing and they know where they want to go and they know the value of marketing. They just maybe haven't found the proper person. Mm -hmm. Um, and, And that's where I come in and I help them to strategize and develop a very authentic, comprehensive way to strategize that's really not being seen in the market right now. So I do really love, I, even though I do work with all entrepreneurs, I really love to gauge those entrepreneurs that, that have their stuff, you know, that have all of their ducks in a row and, and want to scale and grow from there. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. And yeah, I'm sure these people are really happy to find you and just to help put those missing pieces together. Can you walk us through a bit of the process? Let's say if you get a client, what are the first things or the things that you really notice that they always seem to need help with? Um, 
the marketing is, is mm-hmm. it all really boils down to the marketing and, and the message, because at the end of the day, if your content and your messaging isn't speaking to the heart of your brand, you're mm-hmm. not going to grow. You're not going to gain favor with your audience. And I know I might take a little bit of heat for that comment, but it is true. It needs to authentically, your content and everything that you put out in the world needs to authentically speak to the heart of your brand. You need to to voice, you know, how you're going to solve your audience's pain points. And that's, that's a big component. But, you know, it's really hard when you're an entrepreneur, you wear all of the hats mm-hmm. and you don't essentially have time to focus on your own marketing. I mean, being on social media alone, let's be honest, it's a full-time job. <laughs> So they want to scale, they want to grow, but they just, they don't have the time to do it. So they would bring someone in like me. And these are things that I, that I see it's, it's a lack of, because the entrepreneur doesn't have time, it's a lack of speaking to your audience's pain points. And it's a lack of speaking to the heart of your brand. Mm -hmm. And that's what I implement for the the entrepreneurs that I work with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, going back to a bit of your business and what you're doing first, like how long have you started? And also how were you able to grow and put your own messaging out there to get your ideal clients? Yeah, that's a great question. So I've been in this space for just shy of 10 years now. It's been a long time. <laughs> so I've seen a lot of things out there, um, which is wonderful. I love the experience and the background that I have. So it really is great. And Grow. What was the second part of your question? I'm sorry. <laughs> In your opinion, like what has helped you to grow your audience as, you know, like as you're trying to grow clientele for your own business? Right. So that's an important question for me. And I would say that authenticity was a big part of it. When I was just starting, you know, I had joined some programs. I had gotten a business coach like so many of us do, uh, which is really a wonderful thing. But there was a lot of noise. There was a lot of white noise. There was a lot of fluffiness happening in the market. And I did. I let other people influence what I was doing and how I was doing it. Um, Because, you know, when you're just starting, you don't really know what to do. I went to school for law and we didn't really have a lot of business classes in there. So, you know, I needed help and, and I knew kind of what I needed to do and wanted to do, but I wasn't being authentic to myself. So the number one lesson that I've learned in this journey of entrepreneurship is you really have to be authentic. You must speak from your heart. You must be a visionary and a thought leader and say, hey, okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to set myself apart from the pack. And you need to do it in an authentic way because if you're, you know, copy and pasting, quote unquote, from what everybody else is doing to chase virality, you're not going to grow. Harsh but true. That's just the way it is at the end of the day. You need to be authentic. Your audience wants to see that you're a human. And I went through that lesson. It was a hard lesson to learn, but I caught on quick. And once I started being true to myself, my business exploded. Mm. Wow. That's pretty cool. Just that correlation of how that works. So that kind of answers my question, but I still want to ask it. Has there been any other kind of surprising challenges or obstacles that you've had to overcome? few, a few. Learning how to strategize yourself was was challenging because it's all about testing. You have to, you know, kind of do these A, B tests to see what's working and what's not, what resonates, what doesn't. And that could take a really long time. For me, it took about a year. So that was a frustrating process, a little bit of a slow process, but it was something that, you know, needed to be done at the end of the day and ultimately for the best. And then another challenge that I had to overcome, and this was a really tough one, was just really doing your research. When you choose to work with someone, when you choose to build your team, you Mm -hmm. really must do your research um, because somebody just might not be who they say they are. And that was a huge hurdle that I had to overcome myself. So just really be wise and do your research and dig deep when you're building that dream team. Mm -hmm, For sure. And I guess like, even would you say like, as far doing research, like with technology you're using and partnering up, or is it mostly just with like the people being sure that they align with your brand? And that would 
would be the people to make sure that they align and that they operate with integrity and honesty. And that's the way Gregorio Marketing runs. We operate with integrity and honesty always. We always hold our clients' best interests at heart. And we just take that to a whole nother level. You know, you're not just a client to us. You're our family. And we are just as invested in your business as you are. And not everybody operates that way. And that's totally okay. But when you're building that team, you really must make sure that they align with you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I guess it's just being very sure of what that is for you. Like if your brand, like you said, integrity and honesty and always using that as like your guide to be like, this is what we stand for and keeping that moving forward. So that's definitely really important. I'm curious now, so you've been building this business and helping these entrepreneurs. What does your next year look like? Like, what are something that you're kind of striving for to do next? That's an interesting question. I've been giving this a lot of thought. So Mm -hmm. I definitely want to bring more people into the agency. If I personally am expanding my dream team, I would love to be able to help entrepreneurs, more entrepreneurs around the world um, because they need help and we want to be the ones to help them. Um, And I am giving some thought to launching a little bit of a new program. I won't say too much about it. Um, Right now we just have a few agency openings, um, but once they're, you know, filled up, I will begin to work on a program Um, that I think will cover a wider range of entrepreneurs because let's be honest, not everybody can afford these services. And I do want to make sure that entrepreneurs are getting the help they need, no matter what category they fall into. Um, And then another big one that's on my radar, nobody knows this yet, but I'll let you know it's okay. (laughs) I'm, I'm considering writing a book. So that's a big one. I'm not sure yet, um, but I'm I'm giving it some thought. I'm jotting down some ideas because I'm I'm also a writer. So um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love that. As someone as well that does lots of writing, that's definitely one of my goals as well. So let's talk. A, like, if you want, can we talk a bit about that? Like, what's inspired? Absolutely. What's yeah. inspired you to want to write a book, and what would it be about? So. Since I was little, I would say probably even pre-teen, I've I've just written my whole life. I love journaling. I loved everything about writing. I love the words. I just love words in general, the the way that writing makes you feel. There's something very deep about it, and I've always been connected. And so when I was little, I wanted to write a book back then. I always said, when I grow up, I'm going to write a book. My brother, I believe, for my 13th birthday, gave me this journal and said, you're going to write your book in this journal. So, you know, I always wanted to get into it. Um, And I think now more than ever, it's important just to get the knowledge and the information out there to business owners in particular about what's working and what's not. Because we're in a very awkward season of business, right? You know, we we got hit with this pandemic and businesses change everywhere, worldwide. It impacted every single entrepreneur out there. And now we're seeing a real shift in the way that businesses market themselves, in the way that businesses talk about themselves, in the way that they might think that they need something when in reality they don't and they just need good marketing. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, so it would be about getting the information out there, cutting through the fluffiness, cutting through the white noise and just being direct with what you need, what's going to help you grow, you know, and just very obviously pointing out, hey, this works, this doesn't. So it would speak to, to that, I would say. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. I love how it like kind of was manifested earlier on in your life too, where it's like, eventually you're probably going to write a book. We don't know when, but it's going to happen. So that's really exciting that that whole journey starting to take place for you. It just, it also makes me wonder, like, obviously you're super passionate about wanting to share this message and help these people. So I have to ask, what is your why? Like, what is keeping you wanting to do this? Oh, oh boy. You're throwing me for a loop with that one. I mean, my, my family, I, I, you know, will always be my why. I mean, I have three beautiful boys. Um, Mm -hmm. they will always be my why. I want to leave a a legacy for them. I want them to see that, 
you know, mom is more than just a mom. I want them to see that when you put your mind to it, anything can be done because when Gregorio marketing took shape and started shifting from a small little VA business into this beautiful company, I was pregnant with my third. (laughs) I was, and it was a very tough pregnancy and we were just having a lot of of background things happen in, in my personal life. So a lot was happening and I still at the end of the day, put my head down and powered through. Um, so my children will always be my why outside of that. Um, just, I am a deeply passionate person and I love humans in general. And when I, back in in corporate, when I started working with this small business owner, I developed a whole new appreciation and a whole new love for them and really wanted to help them grow. So combining, you know, just being there for my boys and trying to be superwoman for them on top of the real love and passion I have for entrepreneurs, that, that all encompassing is my why and why I do what I do every day. Sweet. Yeah, that's good. A little combination of both kind of to really good, like a good, well-rounded why. So I definitely, (laughs) it is. (laughs) Yeah. I like that. And yeah, I think it is so important just being able to like share kind of, and also like you're inspiring people from your own experiences that what you've gone through and building it. So I think that's really important. And um, with some of your coaches and whatnot, what is their type of motive? Like what type of consulting are they trying to do? And how are you able to like in ways package up their passions and expertise to really showcase to the world? Um, Well, that's another great question. So I currently no longer work with coaches. I just ended a a year long program, um, which was wonderful, Um, but their vision shifted. So it's not really what I'm doing now. I think the one, the one main takeaway that I have learned um, was mindset work and how important mindset work is. You know, it's funny because we, we always us as humans, we know about mindset. We know that the way our minds work and, and you know, if you're positive, you're going to attract positive. If you're negative, you're going to attract negative. We know that. But I guess what I experienced in, in the program that I just finished was a really deep dive into your goals, going after your goals, really realizing how your thoughts and your paradigm take shape in your mind and what it takes to replace those thoughts with, yeah, I can do this. You know, if you want to be the six, seven, eight, nine figure entrepreneur, you can do it. You can go after it. So that was the biggest takeaway, uh, what I learned. I, I don't talk a lot about mindset with my clients because I'm just very business focused with them and strategizing and writing their content and doing all of those things. But um, it was definitely an experience to learn what these amazing coaches are teaching out there because it is powerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And always learning and growing is kind of key to being an entrepreneur anyway. So if you're able to keep that open mind and be willing to, like you said, maybe replace some of your thoughts and existing things that maybe been slowing you down, but to be willing to do that, I think is so important as well. Um, Which brings me to a bit of a next question. Now that you've learned this and, you know, you're growing and evolving and learning as you go, has there been something that you wish you really knew sooner? Oh, wow. I think I wish I knew a lot of things sooner, but I'm sure that we all say that. Um, I think probably a lot of the mindset component and just, you know, self-sabotaging yourself or not thinking you're good enough, really encompassing that confidence piece Mm -hmm. into entrepreneurial life, because this journey can be scary and it's intimidating and it's overwhelming. And when you focus on other people out there and your competitors and you want to root for them, but you're also like, will I ever be as good as they are, you know, and that can really start creeping into your head and that can make you doubt. And like I said, sabotage yourself. So um, I wish I had a little bit of that starting earlier on. I would say I was fairly confident, but not as confident as I am now. You know, because it's not like I wake, you know, wake up and get out of bed every morning. And I think to myself, like, there's not, nobody else can do what I can do. 
Hmm. And that's true for all entrepreneurs out there. You are what makes your business and your brand special and nobody can do what you can do. And I feel the way, the same way about my business. Nobody can write the way that I can write. Nobody can see a brand the way that I can see a brand and put the pieces of the puzzle together to grow you quickly and to spread brand awareness and reach your audience and convert that into, into revenue. So I, I really wish I had that starting out because it's, it's hard. It, yeah. it is, it's, it's just hard. <laughs> if you're an entrepreneur listening, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The one thing that speaks to me is the self-sabotage where I'm kind of the same. Like I thought I was confident and then I feel like it was almost like a false sense of it where I could act like it. But then when it came time for the results to really show it, I knew that I was holding myself back because of my own insecurities. And yeah, I think you know, like it totally does start with ourselves and understanding that one piece of the puzzle. And then people go to you for the more strategy of that piece. And, you know, like eventually they will have that full, that full, um, you know, like that full vision for themselves that they can wake up every day and see it and believe it. So yeah, definitely very important. So with your clients and if anyone's listening that is interested, where exactly like are you online and how are you marketing yourself and also where can they find you? Right. So I'm across most social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn. I do have a Facebook business page, Gregorio Marketing. Um, you can find me just by name, uh, Brittany Gregorio on Instagram, uh, the same on LinkedIn. My website should be done really soon. We've had a couple of delays, but one of the hurdles that I spoke about before. So that is moving. So it's going to be hopefully done by next week. Um, and then for those listening, if you do happen to find me on social media, I'm actually hosting a free workshop all of next week for entrepreneurs. And it's going to be so beneficial, actually giving you the tools you need to successfully grow your business in a very strategic way that's not being talked about right now. So um, that's going to be great. It's all free. So I'm so excited about that. Yeah. So where, where was that again? The workshop? That is, it, you can register. So if you find me on social media, you can register. Almost all of my posts are about it right now. <laughs> Just yeah. trying to amp up awareness. Um, yeah, you can send me an email. You can shoot me a DM if you find me on social media. And uh, yeah, I hope to connect with a lot of awesome entrepreneurs out there. Mm, that's awesome. Do you find giving away free stuff like like what? Because I've heard, obviously, I know that's super important, but I'm curious in your opinion, like how important is it to really be giving away that free, valuable content in hopes to, you know, like inspire, get people to want to work with you, et cetera? It's crucial. There's That's just it. End of story. It's absolutely crucial because you have to think about it as, okay, I'm, I'm not giving away free stuff. I'm coming from a place where I want to serve my people. And that's how you really need to think about it. A lot of people struggle with, you know, do I, do I live launch? Do I host a workshop? You know, what do I, do I give away all, you know, put all of my eggs in one basket and give it away to people? And the answer is yes, you must. That is the only way you're going to grow is by constantly, because your audience needs that information. You know, it's, it's very difficult to connect with a graphic. When you're on social media and you're scrolling, if there's a graphic with just some words on it, maybe a picture of a really pretty office space, it's not you. You know, they can't hear you. They can't see you. The words might be you, and that's great. But at the end of the day, somebody needs to look into your eyes. Somebody needs to hear the words that are coming out of your mouth to really form that connection. So by doing these workshops, whether it's a workshop, a boot camp, you know, however the chips may fall, it really is crucial because your audience wants that information and you need to serve them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes so much sense because it goes back to what we talked about earlier of just that human to human connection. Yeah. And once you build that, then you have someone that like that trusting factor and they want to work with you and stuff. And it's kind of funny, like with that comes its own set of the obstacles, because maybe people are like, oh, I'm afraid to put on camera. Like, I don't want to be judged. And then goes back to that whole mindset component as well. There are a lot of, uh, well, not a lot. I will say a handful of obstacles and challenges that come with, you know, launching these types of workshops. Mm -hmm. Um 
especially if you're going to be on camera. That's probably the number one objection I hear from a lot of people. And it, it is awkward when you do it once, twice, it's going to be awkward. You know, and it's funny because I'm the type of, I love to talk. <laughs> and if you put me in a room with 500 people, I'll talk their ears off. And that doesn't intimidate me. Mm -hmm. But talking to my cell phone when I'm, you know, pre-recording content or being on Zoom, that's intimidating. Mm -hmm. And and that is a major, you know, objection that I hear from people. But practice makes perfect, just like anything. And the more you do it, the better off you'll be. It's just overcoming that initial, you know, being on camera. But it's it's really not as bad as you're making it to be in your mind, because that's the way that I was, too. Yeah, exactly. And it's the whole point of being an entrepreneur is getting out of your comfort zone anyways. So it's like we sign up for this because we know it's going to make us grow and challenge us in these ways. So yeah, I think it's super important to always remember that when it is something scary, it's like, this is the point, like it's supposed to be, and we're supposed to grow right. from it. Yeah. Yeah. But you'll be so happy after you've done it. You'll be yeah. like, wow, I pushed through. I did it. Okay. That wasn't so bad. What's yeah. that? You know? Yeah. yeah. And that goes back even to the confidence. It's like, you do that and you're like, wow, I actually did that. And then slowly, but surely your confidence starts to grow. And then you're like, what can't I do? And absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. So with that all being said, I mean, I feel like we've kind of touched on it, but one of the final questions I like to ask for everyone listening, you know, they liked you, they want to hear one final piece of advice. What is one thing that you'd like to leave our audience members thinking about? I would say don't stop. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do in your entrepreneurial journey, just don't stop. You are a powerhouse mm -hmm. and you can do it. And the biggest thing to remember always is that Success will not come to you overnight. This journey is a slow moving journey and it is so worth it in the end. You just need to be patient. You need to align yourself with the right people and the right team who will help you achieve your goals. And just know that even, even though it, it will be a little bit of a slower going, the end result will truly be magical. And you will start hitting these milestones and, and milestones, rather, sorry, I tripped over that word, and hitting these goals. And the feeling is indescribable. It mm -hmm. really is. So whatever you do, you, if you're frustrated, if you're struggling, I hear you. I've been there myself so many times, but just don't stop. Put your head down, put your blinders on, stop focusing on the white noise. Stop focusing on your competitors and just keep going from an authentic place. Oh, that's beautiful. That's so good. It's Thank you. Yeah. It's important. It really is so important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think for myself, the one takeaway with what you just said is the fact of putting your blinders on has helped me so much because you're, instead of focusing on everything around you, you're just getting very narrow with yourself and keeping like, you know, like task at hand. And if you're someone that gets distracted, being able to do that has, it's so beneficial to just focus in on your lane and know that if you have good intentions, you're going to get there. And yeah, absolutely. Cause it can be, it can be a tad bit discouraging, you know, mm -hmm. just looking at what everybody else is doing. There's a lot of information out there right now. And it, that can be discouraging. You have to put those blinders on and you just have to keep going. Yeah. Just keep showing up and serving your people. Mm -hmm. absolutely yeah awesome well thank you so much for joining that kind of wraps up our time uh again if anyone's just interested please go give Brittany a follow and see what she has to offer everybody and and uh for me just I, I want to say thank you on behalf of myself because this has been a good conversation I made lots of notes so thank you for joining us today and sharing a bit of your wisdom thank you so much for having me <laughs> awesome